Welcome, uh, my name is Luz Cocina, I'm the technical director at Mycolab. We are a company specialized on truffle growing. We help uh, establishing, managing uh, truffle plantations, we also do analysis and uh, we are specialized also in trainings, in, in, in education and, you know, and uh, you know, didactic courses in order for you to be able to run your plantations perfectly. Okay, so we have prepared uh, a couple of tutorials with the idea that you will have a base from which you know how to start a truffle plantation, what it will entitle, so you would see a little bit uh, if it's something that is suitable for you, that will be uh, logical for you to do. And uh, so we have prepared two tutorials. The first one is this one, is uh, how to choose a plot to see if where you want to do it, uh, you, you can maybe do it. Uh, so you have a certain idea if your plot may be suitable or if you have to choose something else in your area that may be suitable before contacting a professional to do a real study and to make sure that you have the more chances possible of getting high yields in your plantation. Then we have made another one that will be in our YouTube channel too. That is uh, about the steps you have to do to establish the plantation. So you have an idea of everything that will entitle to start a plantation. Okay? So here we're going to show you is which plots should directly be ruled out, not even think about doing it there. It's like, no, you're going to crash, don't do it there, <laughs> okay? And which could be a good option, okay? So then you rule out whatever you don't need and the other ones, because you, you have a wide, uh, like, like a narrower range to choose from, that's the idea. Okay, so the first thing that may sound strange to people who speak English and probably are not European, is that uh, truffle plantations have always been related to forestry. So people don't understand a lot of times that this is not forestry, that this is agriculture. If you see pictures of truffle plantations all over the world, they look like fruit tree plantations. They don't look like you're in the wild doing a forest plantation for timber. It's not like that. So the first thing that you have to understand is that we need a place where we can use our tractors. We like tractors, you know like tractors, but we like tractors, we like machinery. Uh, hand labor all over the world is very expensive. Uh, and intensification is the trend. We may like it or not. We will have a long conversation about that. But at the end of the road, we need machinery. And in order to use machinery, what do we need? We need something that is more or less flat. We don't want big slopes. It's like, oh no, water is going to accumulate and the mycorrhiza is going to die. No. If you choose the right soil that drains properly, that is not going to happen. We're going to use agricultural fields that are flat, that are big, that have a good accessibility for our uh, machinery. Uh, and we are going just going to do agriculture, guys. We're not going to do forestry. That's the first thing to do. The second thing to do is that all over the world, we are getting high yields if we are able to water our plantations, okay? I don't want to hear that of, oh, I can pray to the Lord of rain because it normally rains every single year in this period of the year, and then it doesn't rain, and it happens like it happened here last year, that people who didn't have irrigation got zero truffles, when truffles were really, really expensive because this is offer and demand. You know, if there are no truffles, they are really expensive. Those are the years that you want to get a lot of truffles. How do you get a lot of truffles? Irrigate them. How do you get big truffles, and they are sold by weight? Irrigate them so they can grow, okay? So we are going to have to irrigate if it doesn't rain. Australia, some of the most productive plantations in the world are in Australia. They are not only in Teruel, which is three quarters of an hour away from where we are uh, filming this in, in Spain. We are talking about Australia, they have irrigation. They don't depend on rains necessarily. All over the world, you need to be able to irrigate. I mean, this is basic. If you are in agriculture, we all know that we all want water, okay? So make sure you can water your plantation because even if we do a climate study and it says that it rains every year, then I'm sorry, I'm going to say something that you're not supposed to say, but shit happens and then it doesn't rain that year and you lose your investment for that year, not the following year, but you, we don't want that, okay? So we have, we need to have irrigation water. We have to have a reliable source of water and we'll have to see in your area with your climatic studies with the kind of plantation you want to do if you have enough with one million liters 
all you need, which is 1,000 uh, cubic meters. You're going to need more, you're going to need less, but I'm telling you that in Spain, we are fighting to get more than this because well, I mean, uh, our governments in many areas of Spain don't allow us to, to uh, use more than one uh, million liters per, uh, per hectare and year, and it's not enough. I'm just telling you so you have a reference number, I mean, but it depends on your rains, on your soils, and in many things, okay? And in the management system that you're going to use. So consume more or less, but normally you want, the more truffles you want, the more water you need. <laughs> That's basic, okay? For example, one thing you have to understand is at the beginning you can irrigate a small area or water a small area around the trees because the truffles grow near to the tree, but it gets a moment where truffles grow everywhere. <laughs> All over the soil, yeah, any, any place in the plantation you can get truffles. Then you need to irrigate the whole thing if you want to, to get truffles everywhere. And then you need a lot more water, obviously. More things. I say something that is politically incorrect and you know that some truffle growers may think sounds a little bit offensive, but in some things, in some ways, growing truffles is like growing potatoes or like growing carrots or like growing turnips. They need to be able to grow. If you have a soil that is very, that has a very high tendency to get compacted, you're not going to be, the truffles are not going to be able to grow. Okay, we do something that, are, that is called Spanish wells, that where we put peat moss on the ground, you know, like a potting mix kind of inside the ground, and then truffles can go a little bit better, but still it's just, you know, like it's something we do, it's like, but, but it doesn't work as well as having a decent soil. Clay soils are soil that have a tendency to, if they have too much clay, okay, to get compacted, uh, yeah, to, to, uh, the, the, you have to be water more, and they, they, they are heavy, they are soils that are normally not adequate. The amount of clay depends on a lot of things. Depends on organic matter, it depends on the amount of, uh, of stone in the ground, about the gravel, you know, the other sizes. So it, there is not uh, an exact number. In fact, one of the things we do when, they start, when we start a project is that either the client sends us the, the samples, the soil samples, or we go there. Uh, sometimes soils that they have told them they were not uh, suitable because they have seen the soil analysis and it said 35% clay, we, we, we thank the Lord that there is that much clay because, because of the amount of, uh, of stones, of gravel, everything on the, on the ground, if we didn't have a lot of clay it wouldn't work. So we need to uh, actually do com uh, something that is not normally done, that is compassion uh, analysis and some tests that we do at the lab before we send it. To be tested uh, for soil parameters, other soil parameters, mostly nutrients. Okay, a high stone content should, if they are big, especially, is it may be a problem because it deforms the truffles. The truffles are sold. The most expensive truffles are the prettiest truffles. They are not the ones that taste better and smell better. That's the saddest part of life. That is very important too. But if they are ugly, they don't get the price. Okay, so if the soil has a lot of stones, and especially if they are big, they get deformed, they are not round and cute, they get lower prices, they are not first quality. So soils with a lot of stones should be avoided, or we can do correction uh, measures, but at the beginning, I mean, it's not something that you should be looking into, okay? Here you have a soil in the area of Sarrion, in Teruel, with the, where the, the stones have been crushed, and you can see that it's a kind of fluffy, loose kind of soil with a good uh, water percolation. The no, water is not going to get there and, and you know, make puddles. So, it's, no, so it's, it's kind of like a perfect soil to establish a plantation. Okay, more things. Fungal contamination, other fungi on the ground, okay? That is very important, that is something that a lot of people at the international level don't know, and that is that a lot of trees, mostly in Europe are forest trees, but not only, you know, there are fruit trees that have it too, not many, but for example, pecans, if you go to the United States, okay? They have fungi that may compete with the mycorrhiza of your truffles in the roots of your trees. So, soils where you have high levels of those uh, uh, fungi have to be either corrected or not chosen and we don't normally use in, in, in Europe we don't use uh, forests for the soils because they all have this kind of fungi if we are talking about other parts of the world it has to be assessed depending on, on, on the species 
in your in your forest maybe they could use but normally we don't use that kind of soils we use soils that are cropping soils that are normally free what's the problem here the problem here is that if you have a narrow plot with a lot of trees going inside the plot i don't know if you see it but all this is contaminated by other fungi it's making a brulee it's not a brulee from tuber melanosporum this picture is from a plantation or well, from a plot that we went to assess okay but uh it's from other things so you put here your plants and your plants are going to get contaminated i mean if they even if they are strong in black truffle mycorrhiza they are not superman or or, you know wonder woman and they cannot survive to a continuous attack of 1000 fungi there so i mean you have to do in this case we did a control technique we trenched it and what well, we did stuff so okay i have found a plot that looks good i think it could work yeah luth whatever luth said is there yeah what do i do now then you hire us <laughs> as or any honest truffle uh, growing specialist. There are several companies around the world with a lot of prestige that are doing a good job and you need someone to do a good study on your soils and on your plot. It's not only the soil. People think that we are going to do this. Of course, we do soil analysis. We prepare your samples. We do tests before, you, we, before we do true nutrient analysis, but it's not only that. You need somebody to change your climate to make sure your climate is correct, to choose the right species for your climate, to choose the right spacing and the right management for you, to assess other plot parameters that may be a problem, for example, contamination problems, or high stone content, or too low, depending on your soil. Make decisions about corrective measures, like pH, raising the pH, carbonate, a lot of people around the world know about that. Um, uh, I don't know protectors to use, how to till your fields, what previous uh, soil works, you have to do many things. You have to find a professional that is specialized on truffles, not an agricultural engineer that may be specialized. I mean, sometimes they come to me and I'm an agricultural engineer. I mean, an area of oranges. They ask me about oranges. I mean, I have basic knowledge about orange from my studies and from living here, but I wouldn't dare to advise on that. Find someone who is really specialized on this, who knows how soil analysis looks, who knows how soil analysis looks for high yield plantations and can really help you to do it. Okay, because we want a plantation that produces a lot of kilos. So this is a, a model plantation from one of the, high, of the biggest producers of truffles in the world, in the area of Teruel, and we want something that is going to do very well. Okay, so from here, what can I do? We have several videos. If you go to our webpage and you go to the videos section, you have several videos to help you. We really recommend you to read the Truffle Farming Basic Concepts video to, to listen to, to see it. We'll, uh, we'll upload a couple of tutorials. And we also highly recommend you, and it's our baby, and it's, uh, you know, we are very proud of it. Our Truffle Farming course is the only course of this uh, type that I know of, I may be wrong, but that I know of in English around the world, that has all the concepts from when you start thinking about doing the plantation until you have to uh, stop it because it's not producing anymore. Everything you have to do, including dog training, a little bit of dog training, everything, but especially agronomical management, you know, how, how to uh, do agri the agricultural works there. So it's six days long, and we try to teach you as much as we can in the time we have. It's very intensive. You can contact us for anything you need. You can follow us on social media. You can see how we work. We do didactic stuff on social media too. You can see when we go to our clients. You can see stuff there if you're interested. And we really hope you found it useful. And thank you very much for watching.